So this koan is case 20 of the Book of Equanimity. And uh, I just thought it had a nice, uh, it's a, I feel it has a nice uh, resonance in, in really the, the foundation of this practice. It's called, Jizo's Not Knowing is the Most Intimate. Attention, Master Jizo asked Hogan, where have you come from? I pilgrimage aimlessly, replied Hogan. What is the matter of your pilgrimage? asked Jizo. I don't know, replied Hogan. Not knowing is the most intimate, remarked Jizo. At that, Hogan experienced great enlightenment. <coughs> So not knowing, not knowing is most intimate. Uh, that's a big part of our practice. That's a, a foundational teaching of our practice is not knowing. It's one of our three tenets. So it's really a big emphasis for us is not knowing. So what does that mean? not knowing. Uh, simply, it's distinguished from ignorance. You know, there's ignorance, whereas I don't, I don't know. But uh, not knowing is, is more profound and deeper than that. It's not, it's really being open. It's not having a set idea on, on how things are, or how things should be, or how things work. Um, I, I feel it's more of a, an energy level. It's like a vibration. This not knowing, it's not an intellectual uh, condition. It's an energy condition. You know, it's my, what's my energy when I'm coming into a, a situation that's difficult or if I'm dealing with stress? What's my energy level? Especially when I get triggered or I get caught up in, in anger or, be, or being defensive or judgmental, I'm, then my energy is pretty clear. My energy is tight. My energy is, well, I know this. I know what's right in this situation. Or I know what you should do. That energy level of being sort of closed and focused on one, one idea or perspective, <clears throat> that's more about the energy of my body than it is about actually being in touch with the truth. And so the, the alternative to that is, is not knowing, which is openness. Uh, and with wisdom, it's like, it's not ignorance, it's wisdom to be not knowing and let my energy open up to the possibilities. So if I'm getting triggered, someone treats me in a way that I don't like, or I get triggered, or if I treat someone else in a way that's not fair <coughs> because I'm triggered, to shift that, to, to be able to open up to, just like taking a deep breath, and we can feel in Zazen. We focus on our breath, we start, we're kind of tense, and we just take a deep breath and we, we let it out. Feel that energy start to settle from buzzing around in our brain, start to settle down and into the ground. Feel grounded. <coughs> so that ability to let our energy level just open up. And then we can be available for what's really possible. Which is, I don't know. Maybe, you know, oh, you know, oh, you think I'm wrong? Well, maybe you're right. I could be wrong. Oh, I hurt your feelings? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, you know. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what's best for you. I may, I have some ideas that might help, but 
for me, I don't know. I'm not like knowing what's best for you or what's best for me. I'm open. Open to the possibilities, open to the, and that's the emptiness. The situation is empty. To know about it is to put form on top of it, to confine it into a form. To open up to the emptiness is to say, is to let go. To say, yeah, I don't, I really don't know. So, Hogan, the traveling monk, wandering aimlessly, <coughs> comes to visit the teacher who asks, where, where are you coming from? What's going on with you? And he's like, I don't know. So he's, and he's not saying like, I mean, this is an enlightenment story. So he's already there. He's already on the verge of this awakening to this openness. So he's really already coming from that place of, I don't know. He's not like, <coughs> You know, and that's how uh, you know that's how a lot of us are. <coughs> um, coming to this practice and w and with openness. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm just I'm not here because I think that Zen is the best, and I have to do it. I'm not here because I'm running from something else. I'm just here because I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm open. I don't have an agenda. Uh, I'm, I'm just working on my spiritual path. So this is, you know, that's a great place to be. He's not coming with a, a you know, with a lot of suffering which also is a great place to be. But if we're coming with a lot of suffering, we're not necessarily on the verge of this enlightenment experience. You know, this sort of the, the ability to open completely really comes through and out of suffering. It's to practice with the suffering and to let, start to let go of the suffering. And once we really have let go of, of suffering, then we can really be open to manifesting enlightenment. <coughs> so it, it just seems like, yeah, it seems like he doesn't have a lot of baggage, that he's truly here and available and present, but he hasn't had that shift. You know, he's energetically, he's there, but the intellectual shift is, is important, part of the picture. So that's what the teacher is able to, to bring, is like fitting that last piece in the puzzle by simply expressing, you know, oh, you don't, you don't know where you're coming from? Well, not knowing is the most intimate. So they're, they're on the same page. Uh, and it just takes that shift for the student to really open up to what he's already doing, you know, to be enlightened by what he, he, he is already. Which, you know, it is, it's an amazing story. To be in that place of not knowing, you know, is exceptional. Uh, it's what we strive for. <coughs> and it's really, it's really hard. It's, uh, you know, for me, it's almost impossible. <laughs> uh, 